Hello and welcome. We continue learning D by making games. And in this video, we are going to learn how to do simple spreadsheet animations. We are going to animate stateless objects, that is, the animations that do not depend on the game state of the object, such as background animations, or a coin, fire, or a gem. These usually contain a single row of animation frames. The next video, though, will cover the player spreadsheet animation that depends on the player state, having a different animation when it is idle, attacks, runs, or dies. Let me remind you where we left off. We implemented the game menu and gameplay states. We also displayed our player onto the screen. So let me close the window. Before we move on to animations, Let's clean up the project by moving game state modules and player modules into its own folders. In the future, we will implement more game states and our game will have more entities. Keeping order will simplify the development process in the future. Alright, now we can focus on implementing the animations. Let's create an animations folder and add a new module with the same name. We also are going to use the simple sprite sheet of a rotating coin. First, we need to create an animation struct. It needs a texture, our sprite sheet. It also needs to know of all the frames in the sprite sheet. In this case, an array of rectangles that crop the texture at each individual frame. It also needs to know the number of frames in an animation, the index of a current frame, the time it takes for each frame, and a flag that turns the animation on or off. Now let's create a constructor that takes in a texture, number of frames, and frame time. Then we also need to calculate the frame dimensions and set up the frame rectangles. Down below add three functions for starting, stopping, and resetting the animation. Finally, we need update and draw methods to display the current animation. In the update function, if animation is disabled, then we return back from function. Otherwise, we subtract the time passed when the last frame was displayed from the frame time. If time is up, then we move on to the next frame. To animate our coin, we need to create a coin class. Just copy and modify the player code. We also need to add an animation variable and create an animation object with texture, number of frames, and time each frame takes. Then we also need to update the animation. And lastly, we need to override the draw method to use the animation one. We are almost done. The final part is to load the coin texture and create a coin object. At last, we need to update and draw the coin. Alright, let's compile and run the project. Yep, here is our coin animation. If you would like to animate anything else that is as simple like this coin, you can use the same mechanics. For something more complicated, like player animation, we will need to modify the animation object to keep count of all possible animations based on the player state. That we shall do in the next video. Have a nice day and uh, see you next time!